Hey guys, it's Lucid. Welcome. We're going to have a video on gem dumps. So where to put your gems when you have too many of them. Uh, we'll be talking about a few things, namely um, items, globals, and summons and commander summons. Uh, and then, yeah, some ritual based spells too, like, uh, you know, like flames from the sky, because I've got fire pulled up right now. So um, we're not... This is not going to be an exhaustive list of all of the things in the game. Uh, and I'm certain that I'm going to miss some things, which actually are, actually are very good general all-purpose places to spend your gems. Um, so that's just going to be because I'm messing up. However, um, the things I'm not going to be messing up on are going to be leaving out a bunch of things which are situationally useful. Um, and there are going to be certain situations where spending your gems on X, Y, or Z is going to be significantly better than all the things I'm going to list in this video. Things in this video are things that are pretty general purpose, right? So um, if, you, if you have a hundred of these gems and they're burning a hole in your pocket and you need to get rid of them, this is going to be something you can kind of look at and you can pick one of these things that are in each of the, the categories for the different, different gem types and nobody's going to laugh at you because uh, they're going to be pretty generally good spells or items or what have you. Okay, without further ado, let's do fire. So fire, um, we'll start off with what I think are probably the probably the premier earliest use, not earliest use, but some of the, the things you use earliest, uh, like lightless lanterns. Lightless lanterns are one of the... People say like fire isn't great or whatever, Having a fire mage on your nation just so you can forge lightless lanterns, you only need to be fire one. It's a really big deal. Uh, it can really speed up your mid-game research. Um, you know, it's going to, if you go, it, it's a lot better on nations where you're going to prioritize going construction six because you have to get to construction six. So it's kind of deep in the construction tree. But if you get to it. Um, reasonably early, it can speed up a lot of your other timings, like getting alt seven or something else after that. Um, that said, I mean, you would almost always be faster off going directly for Alt-7 rather than going Construction-6 first. But um, it'll pay itself off when you get your next 7 probably faster than you would if you if you skipped Construction-6. Um, these are only three gems with a hammer, and they give you 12 research bonus. They're really good. Um, that said... Um, if you don't need to go research, if you don't need to go construction six, and if you don't have any fire gem income, these can be a bit of a trap. So um, they're useful. They're probably the, one of the best research items in the game. Uh, next up, we have the um, basic fire armor. These are pretty much useful all game. I forge these all the time. Um, <clears throat> the morale bonus can be a really big deal, um, especially if you're thugging with a dude without berserk or something like that. A lot of times they'll run from morale. Um, this is really helpful with that. Um, so this, the hat gives good protection, uh, dark vision 50, which can be very nice, fire resistance 5, and a morale bonus 5. I mean, this is just such a value item. There's so much, it's really good. Now, I mean, that said, it takes a mage turn to make, um, you know, depending who you put it on, they can still die, you can lose it, you know. But it's a, it is a, what I would consider to be a very valuable item. The fire plate's pretty similar. You get fire resistance. Um, you get body protection, which is a lower number, but body protection in general generally is significantly better than the head protection because you're much more likely to get hit in the body. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a good, very early, cheap piece of armor. Um, and it gives you some around, not as much as the head piece. Uh, and yeah, fire resistance too. Um, this is... Um, this one I don't make as much as the headpiece. I would say the headpiece is superior. Like, I'll make the headpiece all game. This you usually only make kind of early. Um, next up, we have the summons. Um, we have Fire Snake. Uh, Fire Snakes, these are just... They're not, like, amazing, but they're pretty good. They have Heat Aura, so if you're fighting somebody without Fire Resistance, these are actually pretty strong when you mass them together. You do have to be friend, uh, careful about Friendly Fire, because they'll burn innate people next to them. Um, and they have Fire fa Flare, which is an area of effect attack, which is really nice. Um, and you combine that with um, Venomous Fangs. They are pretty killy, and they have a good amount of HP. They're just basically, you know, reasonably easy to mass and kind of cheap. If you have a lot of Fire Gems, you know, like if you have 100 Fire Gems, you can turn that into probably like, what, 70 or 80 Fire Snakes. 
if you get buffs on them and things like that, they also have a ton of fire resistance. So if you put like, you know, mass protection on them, uh, well, it's actually not going to help their protection much. It's already nine. But, you know, if you buff them with other things, they're going to become significantly better. Um, so, I mean, it could be whatever buffs you have. Um, but they're not amazing. They're more chaffy, but they're chaffy stuff that can do things, right? So they're going to help you siege forts down faster, things like that. These, I would not say, are like a top-end um, way to spend fire gems compared to some of the other things. Like, I would usually rather make lanterns than these guys. However, if you don't need the research, um, these are going to do you a lot better than lanterns will. So anyway, this is definitely something to consider spending fire gems on. Um, and then um, next one is the Flame Spirit. This actually is the same level access as, a, um, as the Fire Snakes. And I would say this is generally a better way to spend your gems. Um, though it depends what you need. If you need Siege Chaff and you have Fire Gems, go for that, those Fire Snakes. Um, but this is a reasonable price to get a Fire 3 dude. He also comes with um, some Will-O-Wisps at the start of combat, so he's very hard to assassinate. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty pretty damn good. He has a cold weakness, so you'll have to put usually cold resistance items on him if you're worried about Frozen Heart, because he will be a magnet for Frozen Heart casters. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's just a pretty good mage summon, um, and totally worth 30 gems if you have them lying around. So this is definitely something else to consider spending fire gems on. The next thing is flames from the sky. This only comes online in the late game, but it changes the strategic, I mean, it basically changes the whole way you have to play the game once it starts coming online. Um, once this is online, you have to be very careful about moving very large stacks around. It effectively puts a cap on the size of stacks that you can put together, because if you put too much in one place, it gets burninated. So um, you can, of course, counter this by hiding your armies inside domes, like forts with domes on them. But yeah, it's pretty intense. So that's Flames from the Sky. I like it. Um, it's really good. Uh, I mean, it's it's 30 fire gems, and it's basically going to do 15 or 14 armor piercing damage. 15, I can't remember. Um, to half of the units in a province, something like that. Um, one thing I didn't notice is that it does bonus damage based on if you're higher, like if you're fire nine and you cast it, you're going to do four extra bonus damage when you hit somebody. So it's kind of a big deal. Uh, anyway, it's very good. Very, very good. And next up, we are going to do air. All right, so air. Um, we'll start with the items. So the Alquil is something you get really early. It's construction too. Um, if you had a, a lot of air income on your nation, like base nation, you can use this to really jumpstart your research. Uh, the, the problem though, if you do that, is you might need those air gems for other things. Um, so a lot of times it's worth making, it's usually worth making a few Alquils at the start of the game um, if you're one of those nations. Um, but a lot of times you may want to consider turning it off. And the reason is there's just a lot of really other good uses for Alquils. I mean, for air gems other than Alquils. But it's a very significant way to boost your early game research. Um, there's a bunch of good Thug items. They're not like amazing, amazing, but I think it's just worth bearing in mind that you can really easily turn your air gems into Thug items. Um, so one is the Lightning Spear. It is a Link 3 weapon with good stats and shock resistance and an extra effect. It's a really good item. Very much worth. Skultata Volturnus, this is an Air Earth item, but it's probably one of the better shields in the game. Definitely a place to consider dropping some air gems. Um, it's notable for auto-casting the spell Shocking Grasp on units next to it. Basically just is going to shoot a lightning bolt at somebody within a very short range of you. It's a good spell. It also gives you shock resistance. Um, winged boots, uh, these are really good. If you make them and you don't lose them in combat, you're almost never going to regret having made them because it's going to help so much with logistics. Getting the right commander where they need to be is a really big deal. And this helps with it a ton. Um, and basically it's going to give you 20 flying map move, which I believe is map move three in most circumstances. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, next up, the rainbow armor. The rainbow armor is really nice because, 
Well, it's basically the best caster chess piece in a way, because uh, it's going to give you three reinvigoration and some bonus MR. These are both really good things for a caster, and it also has pretty low encumbrance. It'd be better if it was zero, but it's one. Uh, anyway, that's a really good piece of armor. And then we have the Chainmail of Displacement. Um, this is a 10 gem item. It's a little pricey, but if you were a defense-based thug, this is the creme de la creme for um, chess pieces. So, um, you know, if you're going that route, then this is definitely an item to consider. Uh, and then we have the Copper Plate. Very budget, very good. It gives you 25 shock resistance, which I believe is the highest of, I think, most all the normal items. Maybe there's some artifact that gives you more or something, but yeah, you get a boatload of shock resistance, only five gems. Um, the problem with it is it doesn't give you much protection. Um, it also is going to zap the shit out of the first person to attack you. I think they get hit, I forget how much, oh, 20 AN uh, lightning damage. So um, very good on, not really good on, it usually, it's usually not great on thugs or super combatants because uh, of the low protection. It's usually not your first choice. Um, however, it's really good on casters. You don't want to get hit by Thunderstrike or something like that. Uh, that's pretty good. And by the way, it's not quite enough shock resistance to totally save you from uh, Thunderstrike, but it's enough you probably won't get targeted. And um, yeah, anyway, it's a good item. Next, we have the Storm Spool. Storm Spool is really good. This item gets made a ton in multiplayer games. Uh, mainly because it's just, it's basically a shock ring, which is going to give you 15 shock resistance, which is super nice. Um, and it also has a chance to do a little bit of stun damage to attackers, uh, which is a good perk. Uh, this second part doesn't come in all the time, but it comes in enough where it's a pretty clear upgrade over the shock ring, which only gives you 15 resistance for the same price. All right, we're, we'll do globals last. Next, we have summons. So we have the Great Eagles. These are probably the best siege and patrol chaff, or some of the best siege and patrol chaff in the game. Um, they're particularly good at it, not only because they're very efficient in terms of how, like, the gem price per siege strength and the gem price per patrol strength that you get. They're very efficient there. But they're also no slouches in combat. Um, and so that combination makes them really nice. Um, so if you're patrolling... Um, these guys are actually pretty dangerous to thugs or whoever might raid you. You know, if they attack on turn one flying, that can really mess up a lot of plans. Um, they're also not undisciplined, so you can put them on guard commander and just have them sit there and protect your commander, too, if that's what you want to do. So, in general, these are really great siege and patrol units. Definitely worth spending some air gems on once you have Conjuration 6. Uh, Springhawks, these often are a bit overpriced. Um, they're very expensive. You get 20 for five plus half per, or one per two levels. So they're, they're really expensive, but they're really good. Um, I, I think when uh, like a thug dies with 30 or 40 gems of gear on it, people are like, oh, whatever. Right. But then if you lose like 20 gems of summons, people are like, oh, you criminal, <laughs> you know? Um, and the thing is, is that if people aren't expecting these Springhawks and they show up, they can be just devastating. Um, and a lot of that is because they're ethereal. Um, if you have a way to get, um, like, some kind of protection buff on them or something, they'll last a lot longer. But, yeah, they're really strong. They're really strong. Um, but they're, these are mostly, in my opinion, these are like counter raiders. You use these to kill raiders when they're not expecting it. Um, but they can be very effective, and you can totally get 20 gems of value out of them. That said, I don't think I've really ever used them in a game, but I, it's one of the things that I think that I should that I don't. Um, next up, we have Dr Contact Draconians. This is kind of interesting. I didn't ever think this was that good until somebody used it in a game against me and uh, ended up winning the game. So it's a Draconian Chief, and he can summon one of these guys every turn, and these guys are pretty good. Um, you know, they're flying, they siege well, They've got a pretty high damage attack. They don't pack very densely, but they're basically good meat and chaff that can kind of do things in combat, and they have decent MR and morale. So they're just all around solid. They're not like amazing, but they're solid, and they're very good at sieging, they're mobile. There's a lot of good things, there's a lot of pretty good things about them. Um, and not only do you get this chief who can um, basically free spawn these dudes, but you get 15 to start with. 
So um, is it, this is, I think, one of the things that it's sort of worth it right when you cast it, but it does have economy generation behind it too. So I think this is a totally a legit way to spend air gems. Um, and then the final ways to look to spend your air gems that I'm going to mention, and I'm sure I've skipped some important things, are the two globals, which are probably most notable for air. Fata Morgana is also pretty good, but uh, Gale Gate, this is the Gem Gen global for air. Um, this would be gotten more often, except it's in Thaw Mate. And so almost always in a game, by the time somebody gets to Thaw Mate, um, the globals are full. Right, and then air gems, they're honestly so easy to spend. Um, if you have air mages, there's sometimes you'll, for whatever reason, you'll be playing a nation and you really don't have hardly any access to air, but you have a lot of air income. Um, that can be a problem. And the way to fix that problem is you need to get more air mages, which usually means you need to spend nature gems to get fairy queens, which we'll talk about when we get to nature. But um, anyway, Gale Gate is going to give you more air gems, 20 more per turn. Um, it says it's going to spawn hurricanes and stuff around the world. That's a lie. It's bugged. That doesn't work. Uh, thank God. Um, and then Dark Skies, this is one of the stronger globals in the game, um, but only in certain circumstances. Basically, every, it, it goes dark in the world, not like full darkness dark, where it's minus six to set stats. It goes like the light darkness dark, like minus three to stats. And um, yeah, everybody gets minus one morale for each point of your dominion they're in. So if they're in 10 of your dominion, they start off at negative at minus 10 from whatever they were. So a lot of units that'll put it like two or three morale, which translates into them running almost instantly in combat. It can be really strong. However, if you're attacking into people and trying to kill them, well, this might not do anything at all because it's totally based on your dominion. Well, that's air. Next up is water. All right, so for water, uh, we will again start off with items. Uh, there's no research boosters really for water, but there's a lot of really good water items. So um, probably the most ubiquitous one, the one you see the most, is the Frost brand. Uh, it has okay stats, not amazing, although it gives you five cold resistance. And the reason why it's really good is because of this, the small area cold. Um, it's going to hit every time, whether or not you hit, miss, or hit your attack. It's going to do 12 area of effect armor piercing cold damage. And uh, it also has a chance to like chill the target, which I don't actually know what that does. I think it causes some fatigue damage. But um, but yeah, this is going to be really good against a lot of troops that don't have cold resistance. Um, but that would include things like indies. So a lot of times this is just uh, this like when you're raiding, you have to find some way to make the you have to survive and you have to find some way to make the enemy go away. And. One of the ways to make them go away is like fear. Other ways are killing them. This is a way to kill them significantly faster than you would with a lot of other weapons. And that's why it's really good in raiding. So anyway, Frostbrand, you see it every single multiplayer game a ton. It's a super ubiquitous weapon. If you've got thugs, consider making it. Uh, next up, we have the Boots of Quickness. These are a bit more pricey. The, the Frostbrand was five gems or three with a hammer. This is 10 gems or eight with a hammer. Um, pretty expensive, but um, this is useful in peacetime and in war um, because you can move around the map real quickly with it. Um, so it's super useful in saving mage turns and getting mages where you need them to be. Um, but when it comes time to fighting, these are also really good in combat. It's going to give you quickness, which is going to increase your attack and defense and make you attack more often. Uh, they're really good. Um, they're pricey, you know, so... If you lose the guy wearing them, it's going to feel really bad, but uh, they're really strong. Uh, you do have to worry a bit more about fatigue issues when you're running around quickened. So anyway, that's a thing to consider. Um, next up, we have some of the... This is probably the cheapest. I, th I think this is the cheapest. I mean, there could be maybe another one tied with it I'm not thinking of. This is the cheapest um, magic booster in the game. And a lot of people hate on water, and they're like, oh, water sucks as a magic path. I think water's pretty good. And one of the reasons it's pretty good is because you get this. Because um, you're basically just able to get plus one water magic for super cheap for like three gems. So if you are a water three mage, you jump up to water four, no problem. You combine that with also having the cheapest temporary water gem item in the game. So you put 
And this one not only gives you temporary water gems, but it also increases your range, both out of combat and in combat by 25%. So uh, out of combat, it's one additional tile. In combat, it's 25% longer spell range. So yeah, you put both of these items on somebody, which if you have two hammers to forge them, it only is going to cost you six gems. And now they're a significantly better water mage. They are going to have bonus one water path, and they're going to be casting farther. And they have a gem to spend, so they could do like a water elemental or, you know, quickening or whatever it is, right? These are really good. Super good. Super, super good. Uh, Bottle of Living Water, this is also pretty good. Um, this is a bit more luxurious. Um, usually you'll see it mostly on assassins, but it's really good regardless because you're basically just going to be getting a mage every turn, you know, every time you're, I mean, not a mage, a, a big water elemental, essentially for free, not free, but you've paid up front. Um, and yeah, if it dies, you get, doesn't matter. You get another one next fight. Um, and it's a size five. It used to be a size six, but they nerfed it, thankfully, because it used to be too strong. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys are good at dealing with thugs. They're good at dealing with a bunch of things because these are armor piercing attacks. These guys are really good. This is a good item. Um, next up, we have the Demon Bane. Um, this is one of the better items, I think, uh, for like price-wise in terms of value. It is going to give you so many things. It gives you five attack, which is a ton, two defense, which is pretty good. It's a length two weapon, which is pretty nice. Um, and it does high amount of damage to start with. 15 damage on a two-handed weapon is a lot anyway. Um, but in addition, it's going to do two times damage versus demons, which can be exceptional. And if that weren't enough for five gems, you get five bonus HP. There's only two items in the game that give you strict like bonus HP, and this is one of them. So it's remarkable for just that. Um, and then on top of that, as if everything else wasn't enough, you get 15 fire resistance. This is a five gem item, guys. Like a ring of fire only gives you 15 fire resistance. This gives you the 15 and HP and a badass weapon. This is an insane value. It's really good. Next up is the Coral Blade. Coral Blade gives you eight HP. It's the only the second other item that gives you a bonus to HP. It's pretty darn good. Um, notably, it's one-handed instead of two, so that can be really nice if you didn't want to spend two hands to get uh, some extra HP. Um, importantly, it, the stats on it for the weapon itself are pretty mediocre, but importantly, it gives draw blood on damage. So um, I think this can't work um, on certain size. I, I don't know if it's... It might be size 5 and 6. It doesn't work on as frequently, or I don't really remember how, how that works, but... Um, it will often cause draw blood, which is going to give you the bleeding effect, and the bleeding effect is going to cause you to lose fatigue and hit points every turn until it goes away or you die. Um, anyway, it's a very good weapon. Um, next up, we're going to do our summons. First summon we have is the Bishop Fish. Um, these are aquatic um, until you put, like, Shambler Skin or um, Amulet of the Fish on them, and then they can wander out of water. Uh, but it's the only, I think, generic Holy Three you can summon. So if you want Holy Threes to do Divine Blessing on your army or to claim thrones, this is your man. This is your man. Um, they're also reasonably cheap. Uh, 15 gems to get a Holy Three commander is not very bad. Um, you just also have to factor in making Shambler skin form. And, uh, well, it makes sense. He's aquatic. You can't summon this guy on land. You need an underwater lab. So that's another consideration for making it. But Bishop Fish is pretty darn good. Next up, uh, we're generally not covering the site searching ones, but this one's so efficient uh, in terms of mage turns and whatnot. It bears special mention. If you have water gems burning a hole in your pocket and you have water places you haven't site searched with Voice of Tiamat or for these paths, think about doing it. It's really good. Um, also, one thing I meant to mention at the beginning of the water segment was we're not covering combat spells, right? This is rituals and items and things like that. Um, but obviously, if you have a ton of gems, spending them in combat is often a very great way to spend them. So like summoning elementals or doing buffs or whatever it is. All right, next up, we have the Sea King's Court. Um, this one is expensive. It's pricey, but you get a lot of really good stuff. You get really good stuff. You get the Sea King which is super combatant tier. 
He costs upkeep though in terms of gold, so that's a bit of a zinger. But he pays for that by giving you uh, one water gem every month, which is pretty insane. Um, he has 15 base regen and an additional 10 underwater. It's one of the few chassis in the game that can super combat in into like water elementals. That said, you often still need to fluff him and things like that, but um, he is an exceptionally strong dude. Um, yeah, he's really good. Super duper good. And he's, you don't have to use him as, as a super combatant. He's a totally great mage, too. Um, so these guys are great, and then they have some... This is pretty small. Like, this is not... If, it's like 55 turns to pay itself back. That's not... The way to think about this isn't like oh, we're getting free gems, right? You don't do this for the economy, really. You do it because... I think you have to be underwater to cast it, right? He is amphibious. Oh, maybe you don't have to be. May use underwater. Yeah, I don't think it's required to be underwater. But, um... But, yeah, the way to think about this guy isn't that he's, like, a gem generator, because the gem gen is too slow. It's most of the time, by the time it's you have Conjuration 6 and you're summoning him, very often he won't pay himself back through the whole game. The way to think about it, and I think Sai was the one who I heard say this way, is he, if you're going to need them anyway, it's better to get them early. Right? So it's more like you get a discount the earlier you buy them in a game. If you're going to get them anyway. If you're not going to get them, like if you don't think you're going to want them in 20 turns, then you know, why spend the gems on them now? So, anyway. But they're pretty good. And But this isn't all you get. You also get the Sea Trolls and the Sea Guard. Now, uh, the Troll Guard. The Troll Guard are really good. So, first of all, all these cost upkeep. So, when you get them, you don't want to, like, don't summon these and let them sit in your fort. Go shuffle them off to war where they're going to win you glory or die in combat. And, yeah, you basically are going to... These guys are just good troops, right? They've got a lot of hit points. They've got a ton of regen, especially underwater. They're just good troops. They've got good protection. These guys are... They will die a lot easier, basically. These guys also hit a lot harder with the cor Coral Glaive. These guys die a lot easier. They're not really very good in combat, particularly. Um, I think these ones are more useful. These guys I would probably want to buff up and have them run into combat. These guys, I would probably look to make them Soul Vortex communion, like, or Soul Vortex batteries for some caster, if I had the option. If I didn't have the option, I would just put them in the front line and let them die however they saw fit, because they probably will die in combat, and they cost you a, a lot of upkeep. Um, so better to use them and get them out of the way. But when you factor this all in, this spell is totally worth 55 gems to summon... Um, all this stuff, um, and the earlier you do it, the better. Seeking Squirt. Next up, we have Maelstrom, and Vengeful Water, and Murdering Winter. These are the ritual spells, which I think are probably going to be your best bang for your buck. Um, other things come to mind, like uh, Wolven in Winter, if you're a cold nation fighting in cold scales matters, but... Um, Maelstrom's nice. Um, people don't think of it a lot, but this is... When you add up all these, I believe this is 27 gems total. So that's more than any of the other gem gens. Uh, you have to be underwater to cast it. And yeah, it's really good. It's really good. You have to be Evocation 8, which is usually not a target for a lot of nations. However, some nations, this is a target. They do want to go for Evocation first. So if you're one of those nations and you have water access... It's usually something you want to aim for. It's really good. Vengeful Water. Oh, boy. Um, this one is kind of interesting. I could kind of talk for a long time about it. I'll try to keep it short. But basically, you cast this, and depending on how much dominion you have in a province, um, it will spawn water elemental assassins to kill people that are invading, or that are in your dominion. They don't even have to be in your land. They just have to be in your dominion. Uh, the chance of attacking is 5% base, and then plus 2% times your dominion. This 5% is not global, right? So if, the, if they aren't in your dominion, they're not going to get attacked. It's only in your dominion. But if they're in your dominion, here are the chances. Uh, additionally, uh, if you're in cold, you'll get attacked by a water elemental. I had, I had somewhere I wrote down all the possible outcomes. 
Um, if you're heat and inland, not adjacent to water, it's only like a size two elemental. It's actually not very scary. A lot of things can kill a size two water elemental or something like that. It's something small. But if you're near a water source, then like the, you know, if you're next to a lake or something, it's going to be a size five water elemental, I believe. And those things are freaking scary. Um, I think also if it's inland and next to water, but it's cold three, then you get attacked by uh, an ice elemental, which I think is bigger than, I'm not sure if it's size five. I think it is. So it's kind of weird. Like, is it better to be heat or cold with vengeful water up? It depends what kind of province you're in. If you're near the water, it's usually a lot better to be heat because the, the water elementals are better than the ice and assassination battles a lot of the time. But if you're inland, the cold is better because size two water elementals suck. It's something like that. Now, I don't remember the exact details, but um, either way, this is if you're getting invaded and you need people to leave, this is a good way to uh, encourage them to get the hell out of there. And next up, we have Murdering Winter. This uh, can only be cast once per turn per province that you're targeting, unlike Flames from the Sky, which you can stack. Um, this does, Flames from the Sky is damage that is independent of temperature scales. However, Murdering Winter depends entirely on your temperature scales. In Cold 3, it can be devastating. In Heat 3, it does almost nothing. But um, I believe in Cold 3, it does like about 14 armor negating cold damage, something like that. And um, yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Um, if you don't have cold resistance and you're a human and you're in cold three, you're going to have a very, very bad day when this rolls into town. I think it does less, it has less likely to hit uh, commanders. I think it's only like 20% of commanders. But this is devastating. Um, if you, well, yeah. It's pretty, 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 pretty strong. It's a good spell. Um, it's more expensive than Flames from the Sky, and it's more situational. But when you use it, oh boy, does it hurt. So I think that's all of the water stuff. We'll do Earth next. All right, guys. For Earth, uh, we've got a few things. We've got a lot of items for Earth. There's a lot of things which, depending on your circumstance, are usually pretty good items to get. Uh, so we'll start with Armor of Knights, this Construction 6, it's probably the best budget armor in the game for just, like, protection and things like that. You get just a whopping 23 protection. It's really good. Only 5 gems. Highly recommend. Black Steel Helmet is available early. Uh, it's cheap. Um, it's not as good as the Fire Hat. The Fire Hat's almost, almost strictly superior, it's just way better. But, it's cheap, you can make it starting level 0. Um, yeah. Uh, the Stinger, this, as well as, there's basically a bunch of kind of pretty similar one-handed earth weapons that are going to give you armor-piercing attacks. This one I like because it's a Link 3, but they're all pretty similar. Um, they can be slightly better or worse in different situations, but any of them, those are usually pretty decent items to consider getting. Only five gems. Definitely, uh, so this is better for like a counter-thug thing where you're worried about killing some high-protection dude. Um, that's when you want to get one of these a lot of times. Um, and speaking of which, if you're doing that, a lot of times you want the two-handed one, which is like the great sword of sharpness, uh, because it does a lot more base damage, um, has higher attack, and it um, is also armor piercing. So definitely worth considering getting this instead. If you're, if you're worried about killing a thug too, a lot of times you don't have a shield, so you can afford to go up to two-handed and get that bonus damage. But really, if you want a shield, use a one-handed one. If you don't care so much about it, um, and the thing you want to hit through has a ton of HP, try the Great Sword of Sharpness. So these are both pretty good at... These are specifically designed to deal with high protection thugs or super combatants, and it is a way to get through that. Um, they're very good at that job. Um, next up, we have the Midget Masher. Um, this is situational, and I know it... I said I wouldn't put many situational items in here, but um, it can be really good. If you're bigger than the people you're hitting, it's going to be your highest damage item. Pretty much guaranteed. Uh, unless they have a lot of defense, in which case you may miss a ton. But if, you're, if you think you're going to hit them, and they're smaller than you, this thing is going to do an obscene amount of damage. Um, the thing is, is that a lot of times when things are smaller than you, you don't care about doing a lot of damage. You want to actually just hit them, because you'll kill them anyway if you're hitting them with a thug. 
So, um, really, this mostly gets used on real like killing things that are like size four and five when you are size five or six, right? So, um, that's mostly when you use this. Um, next up, we have the main gosh of parrying. This thing gives you the most defense out of all the standard items in the game, and it's only five earth gems. Um, and so, yeah, you put two of these in the right and left hand, and it's a bonus 12 defense. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. That said, if you're going for a defense-based thug, you can get harassed down real hard. So, you know, a kit you might see would be this and, like, a vine shield, which will prevent a lot of the harassment penalty. But, uh, anyway, this is a, a super solid item. Definitely worth five Earth Gems. Uh, Hammer of the Mountain. This is also... This is good against things that have high defense, where you'll probably hit them, because this does 25 damage if you hit them. Uh, you'll probably kill them if you hit them. Um, this stun effect will, it doesn't hit big things, so if you're fighting, like, giants, this isn't a good counter, but, um, and I forget exactly how the size negates works, but it's going to, uh, do pretty good at killing things with high defense. And that's what this is for. It's a two-handed weapon. Notably, it gives you a big-ass defense penalty yourself. Um, and then we have the Lightning Rod. This is an item that doesn't see a lot of play, and I've only really discovered it somewhat recently. Um, but it's pretty damn useful, because it's five gems to give you a magic attack with four defense, which, by the way, is pretty damn good. It's two-handed, but, I mean, we're, like, near main gosh parrying levels of bonus defense. Like, it's a very good amount of defense, but, you know, it takes both hands. And generally, a lot of these two-handed weapons are going to have higher defense bonuses than the one-handed weapons. But you're getting, if you put this on like a mage, you're going to give them 15 shock resistance. So think about this. A lot of times you would see somebody putting a storm spool on a mage to protect them from lightning. A lot of times, if you, if you value earth and air gems equally, this is strictly superior. Because not only are you going to give them the same shock resistance as the storm spool, you're also going to give them bonus defense and a magic weapon attack that's probably going to be significantly better than what they had before. This actually is a really good item. Bracers of protection and by the way th that's like some things I'm parroting back to you things that are community consensus Sometimes it's shit. I figured out that last one the lightning rod is shit. I figured out Bracer of protection. This is really good. Um, it used to be you could put two of them on a unit and uh, They would get um, It would stack basically now you only get one you can't stack it so you used to be able to get really high protection what still does work is for however many actually do stack, which for most cases in Dominions now after the patch is one, you can put Legions of Steel on it. And the Legions of Steel will apply to this item and to your armor and helmet. So you effectively double the value from Legions of Steel. That's usually the reason why you want to do that. Uh, use this item at all is you put it on a thug, you're going to put Legions of Steel on and you get that, uh, that protection stacking and then they have really high protection. Braces of protection. Earth boots. Pretty cheap booster. I think I'm going to cover... I'll try to cover all the boosters which are not weird cross paths and are only like 10 gems or less because I think those are all great ways to spend your gems. Yeah. This is going to give you a bonus earth path. It's really good. All right. On to the summons. So um, we have summon ogres. Uh, these are pretty good siege chaff. Um, and I believe they're also one of the better units at holding up fort walls. So if you're stuck inside a fort and you need fort to siege defense, uh, these are something you can hit the button on. Um, they're also, while they don't have great magic resistance and their other, their stat lines really aren't great, but they do a tremendous amount of damage if they hit. So if somebody's running at you with a lot of really good protection based stuff, this is something to consider making as well. Um, the Troll King's Court. Uh, Conjuration 6, similarly priced to the Sea King's Court, and giving you similar things. Uh, basically, a three-path mage for the respective path. So the Troll King is Earth 3. He's got Region 15. He does have a big fire weakness, so you need to make sure to put fire resistance gear on him. But, um, yeah, he's a sick mage. You do summon Earth Power. He's all of a sudden an Earth 4 mage. And Earth 4 is enough to drop all of the big buffs you need. So, 
Uh, really, this guy is your ticket to doing all the in-game Earth buffs. Um, totally worth 55 gems. Uh, it's really the... I think it's probably the only reliable way of getting a really high-level Earth Mage. Uh, unless you can recruit one. Um, and you get a big pile of trolls that come with them. And again, these guys, much like the Sea King Court, cost upkeep. A lot of upkeep, actually. So you want to use them. Don't let them sit around in your forts. Um, but yeah, they're pretty good. They're And they're all pretty good. Like the trolls, which are the least good of them, are significantly better in combat than the, like the, the crappy Sea King trolls you get. The war trolls, the guy with actual guys with actual armor, are pretty sick in melee. If you get a few buffs on them, they can they can be absolute monsters. All these guys do have a fire weakness, though, so that's something to think about how you're going to deal with. And unlike the troll king, you can't put items on them. So really, at best, you're going to be able to mitigate like five of the fire malice, um, and then after that, you're kind of screwed. So, um, but nevertheless, they're really good. But uh, be careful taking them in against fire mages. The other thing, too, is if you have a fire weakness, if you get set on fire, I don't think it will ever go out. I don't think so. Maybe it will go out in cold three. I'm not sure. Anyway, these are really good. <coughs> really good. Nobody will ever laugh at you for uh, casting Troll King's Court. Um, next up, we have Forest Troll... Oh, wait. No, that's a nature spell. What am I doing? Um, we have uh, Summon Cave Grubs. Uh, this you have to be in a terrain in a cave to cast, but uh, these guys are very, very good at sieging. They're probably some of the best ways to convert gems into siege chaff. Um, and they're also no joke in combat with corrosive by. I mean, they first of all they're not great in combat, but they have a ton of hit points, guys. Like they really they do not die super easily. Um, and they have a corrosion effect too. So you know they're not horrible mixed in with your troops. They can soften up some things for your other guys to kill. Uh, they're, they do a decent amount of damage. I think it's like 19 total. Um, it's not great considering they take up, you know, their size four, but it's fine. Basically, they're useful siege chaff. Like, they're not going to just fall over and die the first time they go in combat. They can actually do things, and on top of that, they're really good siege chaff. The trick is you need a cave, though. That is Z Cave Grub. Um, next up, we have Mechanical Men. There's honestly a lot of these things which are the construction summons. A lot of them are kind of okay. They're not bad. Um, these are notable for you. They're pretty efficient. You get 10 of them per mage or per cast. They cost 15 gems. And they have all the resistances. That's the main reason you get them is because they have all the resistances and they have good protection. They really are just very tough. They're very tough. They're very hard to kill. If you need a blocker unit and you're worried about all sorts of crazy elemental magic roasting them, uh, this is a decent option for you. That said, they don't have a lot of hit points, and things which are like elite troops will be able to get through 18 protection and chop them up in combat. And because they don't actually have armor, proper armor, this is natural protection. Uh, what that also is going to mean is you can't really buff this to get it much higher. Like, if you do Army of Gold, it's only going to be 20 protection rather than 18. Or maybe it'll be 21. I can't remember how it stacks exactly. But, um, yeah, basically, uh, you don't want these guys in melee very much. They have pretty good protection. They're not going to, like, immediately die. But their, their real job is to, like, be blockers that are resistant to evocation. Um, that are not in, it's kind of a weird role, that are not in contact with elite units punching them really hard. <laughs> so, you know, like bodyguards for your mages when you're expecting battlefield wide uh, elemental evocations, that's uh, probably the ideal job for these guys when you're worried about flanks. Um, like sticking them up on your front line, probably not very efficient. Next up, we have um, two Earth Globals. Of course, there's more than this. I'm only putting up Globals that I think are just, like, generically really good. One is Earthblood Deepwell. It just gener generates a lot of Earth Gems for you. And another one is Riches from Beneath. Um, this gives you bonus resources, which if you're a resource-constrained nation for making high-quality troops, this can be really nice. Uh, it also, if you have high dominion in your provinces, is going to give you around 25% bonus income if you keep if you uh, put it up. If you don't have high dominion, 
Uh, it's going to be way less than that. Um, so, yeah, if you're like a one or two Dominion, like candles in a lot of your provinces, this isn't going to be super awesome. So that's it for Earth. All right, Astral will go through pretty quick. Um, Astral, there's a bunch of pretty good items. The Amulet of Anti-Magic is one. Its budget gives you uh, magic resistance. The Enchanted Pike is a Construction Zero item. That's probably one of the better Construction Zero items. Uh, it's Length 5, so you get Repels a lot, and it gives you bonus. Otherwise, it's just pretty good stats. Uh, the Eye of the Void and the Spell Focus are both very cheap uh, magic penetration items. Um, oh, I, the Void actually gives you Taint. I didn't know that. But, um, but yeah, they basically are going to let you get higher penetration rolls, which is real nice. Um, the Moonblade is a budget 5 gem item. It's really good. If, if your job is to chop through like elementals or things like that, it's exceptionally good at that job. But generally, it gives very good stats, too. Like, plus 5 defense is really good for attack, and then it does a good bit of damage. So, uh, pretty good for a two-handed weapon. Um, Pendant of Luck um, can be pretty good to casually toss this on guys you don't want to die if you're not going to have luck buffs on them from some other source. Uh, particularly good on things that have a small amount of HP. And Shroud of the Battle Saint, if you have a good Bless, that can, this can be super good to toss on to various units to, uh, to give that to them. So um, always consider, you know, when you're looking at a nation, especially if it's a nation where you're going to take a good Bless, Never miss a good opportunity to put uh, a Shroud of the Saint on a worthy recipient. Um, next up, we have the units, or the summons. Um, this one I didn't actually think was very good until I used it in a game. It's very expensive. That's the first thing we have to get out of the way. It's super expensive. It's 90 pearls, but it's really good. It's really good. Um, it is going to give you an Aether Lord, which is one of the few Magic Face... I'm going to say this is a super combatant, but this is like a low tier super combatant, okay? Um, it is going to get magic power, but it's a magic being, so it can be cut down by things like that Moonblade I was showing you. But all of them can magic phase, and they come with enough death that they can do invulnerability and soul vortex if you give them a skull staff or if you give them an extra death gem or two. Um, additionally, they're going to come in a few flavors. You can get a blood random which um, Astral Blood is really nice, and Death Blood can be nice. The Death Random is nice. You don't have to worry about that extra path for Soul Vortex and things like that. The Astral Random is really nice because Astral Fours are super rare in the game. Um, it's like wish-worthy to get an Astral Four sometimes. Uh, that's probably the best one, actually. And the Air Random is also amazing because you're going to get um, a Wind of Death Caster or Wailing Winds Caster. So... In short, this guy is freaking excellent. He is an amazing, amazing mage. The problem, though, is he's really expensive. Is he worth 90 gems? Ah, he could be. He could be, but probably not most of the time. But he's really good. If you're fighting things without magic weapons, he's also ethereal, too. So that's built in. He can stack wipe. He can kill a whole army. But it has to be... Not an army with the counters to him in it. He's not like a... He's not like a Melkwort, which is going to need very specific things to kill him. Uh, he just kind of has to... Like, things which are generally going to be good against thugs and super combatants at all are generally going to kill him. So this is a, a low-end super combatant, but he's capable of magic phasing, and he's pretty damn good. Uh, he comes with some of these guys. Now, these guys... Um, they're size three, so they pack two per tile. They carry moon blades, right? Which, if you think about it, if we said moon blades are worth five pearls, and we get fifteen of these guys, it's five times fifteen. You know, that's like almost seventy gems of stuff right here. Um, they they benefit being in magic power, so magic power one. Um, that's pretty good for them. They. Um, so these stats in Magic 3 are going to be pretty sick. It's going to be 16 and 17 here for attack and defense. Uh, on top of that, they have pretty good protection, right, and decent hit points. Um, and they're also ethereal. Um, these guys are really good. Um, I would hesitate to use them... Yeah, um, like, they're too expensive and too good for you to just willy-nilly, in my opinion, throw them into the front line of combat. You can. 
and they'll do fine. But I think it's better to think about them as a special forces, right? So you get them, they're special forces, you buff them and deploy them in a special way. Um, all in all, if you can make good use of the Ether Lord and you can make good use of the Ether Warriors, I think it is worth 90 gems. If you can't make great use of it, um, it, this is probably not a great sort. You know, like this isn't something, this is more situational than a lot of the other things in the list, but there's not a lot of great astral summons. Uh, and this would qualify as probably one of the better ones. Though it's situational. Um, next up we have Golem Construction, available at Construction 7. This is the other reasonably common, generically available, magic phasing, low-end, super combatant. Um, they are really annoying to deal with. If you have an army that's not set up to handle a golem, a golem can stack wipe it. Um, like the Aether Lord, he is also a magic being. Unlike the Aether Lord, he is inanimate and mindless. So a lot of the things that will work against a lot of other types of thugs, like Soul Slay, won't work on this guy. So, yeah, he's a big boss. Um, that said, he has horrible attack, horrible defense, not very good protection. Um, you need to use one of his slots to get him up to Astral 3 so he can magic phase. In short, um, it's actually pretty easy to kill him if what he's fighting has magic weapons. Um, he's also, because he's an animate, he can't regenerate. Uh, and if you wanted to put, like... <coughs> some life-stealing weapon on him, well, that would normally work, except, well, except that uh, he, his attack is freaking garbage. So him having to hit something to life-steal, good luck with that. Um, anyway, that is the golem. Uh, next up, we have the rituals and the globals. Uh, wish, this is really good. You can look up like a Wikipedia article for all the things you can wish for. The most common ones are probably wishing for a specific unit, which you then have to gift of reason to make it a really good commander. But you can get some of the best chassis in the game with this. Um, it's really good. You can also wish for unique items and try to steal them from people. That's usually expensive and doesn't get done much because it's not worth it. But in specific situations, it can be worth it. Um, but yeah, it's a really strong spell. And it's really good. Uh, you have to be Alt-9 to cast it, though. And you have to be a really high... You have to be Astral-9, too. So getting an Astral-9 Mage is not trivial at all. Um, next up, we have Arcane Nexus. This is one of the game-winning globals. Um, if you are able to keep it up, you will probably win the game. Uh, it's probably the strongest global in the game. It's really, 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 really good. It Basically, it's going to take all non-pearls spent on the whole map uh, it doesn't include Blood Slaves. No Pearls or Blood Slaves. It's going to take a quarter of those and give it to you as Pearls, is basically how that works. It's pretty good. Um, Eyes of God, this also is pretty useful. Um, there's a bunch of small benefits, like it gives you better scouting and things like that. Um, but it also is going to show you all the sites in the world and show you all the score graphs. Uh, it's pretty good. Especially if you have an enchantment discount site and there's a free global spot, just put it up. Uh, yeah, that's Astral. Next up, we have Death. All right, uh, for Death, we've got a few things. Uh, let me get these straightened out real quick. So we've got the Skull Mentor, which is expensive, and Death Gems are really good. Um, but it's a Construction 4 thing that gives you a lot of research. Um, a lot of times you'll skip this, but if you have a big Death Gem surplus and you just hit Construction 4, probably best to go ahead and make a few of these. Um, because basically, if you have the big Death Gem surplus, what it means is you don't have enough research to spend them, and this is going to help fix that problem for you. Um, next up, we have the Skull Staff. Um, it's another 10 Gem Path Booster. All these are very efficient. Um, you know, just making a mage one path better for 10 Gems, super good a lot of times. Uh, really good on skelly spammers. You're going to make one extra skeleton every time you cast if you have one higher path, and it's going to be uh, less fatigue. So, really good. Har Helmet. Um, this is definitely a good super combatant headpiece. Um, having fear is super useful, so definitely consider putting this on. This is a little bit too pricey for like a budget thug, but for like a top-end thug or a super combatant, uh, this can be really good if you've got death gems lying around. 
And the Wraith Sword, um, this is uh, a really nice weapon. It's two-handed. The only problem with it really is that it's two-handed. Um, aside from that, though, it's going to fix a lot of your problems. It's going to heal you because it's got life drain. So it's going to get rid of a lot of, like, chip... A lot of times with a thug or super combatant, you need to be able to manage chip damage that's coming in so that you don't get overwhelmed by small amounts of damage. This is going to fix your chip damage issues if you don't need a shield. Um, and additionally, it, you also have to not fatigue out in a long fight. And this, as long as you're not fighting undead, because the life drain doesn't work against undead, uh, this will deal with your fatigue issue as well. So um, this is a, a really good sword in a lot of circumstances. Next up, we have the Well of Mis... Oh, we'll do this last. Uh, the Summons. We have Pale Riders. This gives you 20 horsemen for 10 gems. This is a super good value. These guys with these Lance Charge can pop a lot of dudes, uh, and they're really fast, so they're really good at flanking. This is a really good investment. Uh, I don't, probably don't cast this spell enough. It's really good. Summon Spectre. We get a Spectral Mage. These guys are important for breaking you into very specific cross paths. Specifically, Earth Death is a really good cross path to break into. Astral Death and Water Death are also good to break into. Um, and then you can also potentially get an Astral 2, an Earth 2, or a Water 2. Though those are pretty rare. Um, but yeah, this is totally a good way. To a lot of these guys can thug too. I'm not going to go through all the different combinations and how they can thug, but a lot of these can thug. Uh, and the chassis is a good base ch thug chassis because it's got built-in life drain, fear, and it's ethereal. So this is definitely a good way to spend some gems. Um, next up, we have Legion of Whites. Um, these are one of the end game summons. They're very good units. They have a magic weapon, which is important in the late game. Um, they have good base MR, which is important in the late game, and they have good morale, which is important in the late game. Um, in addition to that, they have a lot of hit points and uh, good armor. And because this protection comes from armor, they take buffs like Army of Gold really well. Uh, the problem with them is that they're undead, so they'll get wrecked by things like Withering Bones or Wither Bones. So if you're not worried about that, these are really good to add into an army. If you are worried about that, maybe you skip them. But uh, anyway, those are whites. Legions of Whites, pretty good spell. Um, next up, we have Lich, or basically the two death summons. And they're both really good. The Lich is cheaper and a higher path. Um, the downsides of getting the Lich is that uh, he is going to be... Uh, well, he, he has a longer respawn time. It's going to take him three turns to come back. Whereas the Wraith Lord is going to come back in one turn. And he has no base armor. So a lot of times, because these guys are immortal, you don't want to invest a lot of items into them. So if you're thugging, you want to thug almost naked. And I say naked, but, you know, no items. Right? So the fact that the Wraith Lord comes with um, armor a lot of times means he's going to be able to do Soul Vortex and Invulnerability and be better as a thug than the Lich. But the Lich is a better caster, and it's a little bit cheaper. So those are the things to weigh. Depending on the circumstance, probably one of these is optimal sometimes and the other one's optimal other times. And then add on top of that, each player's or each player has their own preference for which of these they like. But um, these are both really good, is I think the bottom line. And people will say one is better than the other. In truth, they're better in different circumstances, and they're both good. And then Well of Misery is a pretty cool one. It gives you 21 death gems a month and gives a 10% income across the world. So uh, I would say the income is better for nations that derive a larger portion of their total power from gold, right? And the, so that's basically who this is going to help. Like if you're a blood hunting nation, this is not really good for you. Because other nations, which are getting more of their value from income, are going to get a better benefit from this. Because in some ways, if you help everybody, you don't help anybody, right? But this doesn't, even though it applies to everybody, it doesn't exactly apply evenly. Because some people will get more value from gems than they do from gold. If, like, your whole thing is gold, this is going to help you more. And then the death gems is obvious and nice. Uh, there's also, like, utter dark... But this really is only relevant for a pop kill. Um, and then sometimes for, like, blood powers, but kind of yuck. Um, if you're a pop kill, you can't let pop... This is the reason you can't let pop kills make it to late game, though. 
So that is death. Next up, we have nature. All right, and for nature, uh, this will be kind of interesting. Um, not that many items, uh, but the items that uh, do get you or that are good for nature are ubiquitous. They get used all the time. Ring of region, uh, region super useful for dealing with chip damage and sometimes uh, more than chip damage. But yeah, it's a really good item. Uh, I see this all the time. Ten gems, so it's not exactly cheap. Uh, Boots of the Messenger, another logistics item that is great in peace and in war. Um, three Reinvigoration is really good on thugs and mages. Uh, and the map move bonus is amazing. This, all in all, is an amazing item. Probably one of the most made items by me, um, and then probably by a lot of other people too. Uh, Thistle Mace, super good. Uh, again, it's it's in the club of the 10 gem uh, path boosting items. Uh, it's really good and worth it a lot of times. And then we have the Vine Shield. This is probably the most ubiquitous thug item. Um, while it's not always great against elite troops uh, that do high slashing damage especially because uh, it can break, um, it won't break immediately even against elite troops. So sometimes if it's not many of them, it's going to be enough to hold them off while you kill them. <laughs> but it basically is going to entangle and attackers around it. And it's really never going to break against province defense except maybe some of the barbs. But uh, this is just very, very good against independence and province defense. Um, and that's why it goes on a ton of thugs. It's a very, very good thug item and very common. Uh, next up, we have some of the nature summons, and I'm probably going to miss some. I'm kind of getting tired, I, I must admit, as we get to the end of this, because I'm it's a it's getting to be a much longer video than I thought. And uh, between each of the things I'm going through and thinking about it and selecting all these, so starting to get worn out. But we have Vineman. Um, these are pretty good chaff units, especially on like Guard Commander. They have enough hit points, they don't always die to remotes, they heal, they're mindless. They don't have much MR though, but otherwise they're pretty good. Uh, Vine Ogres, and by the way, there's an item that increases the efficiency of both of these. So um, these are pretty good. Um, but Vine Ogres um, also don't have much MR, but have a lot more hit points. Um, but they're pretty good units. Um, and then we have the Fairy Court. Uh, this is one of the... Air mages you cannot get reliably. Like, you can get the, the air queen, but there's not, like, the troll king or something, which is the equivalent for how you're going to, you know, you spend air gems to get an air three mage. That doesn't exist in vanilla, which is cool because, it you know, not all the magic paths are the same. It's not all a cookie cutter. Some are different. This is the only way to get a high level, a reasonably high level air mage in vanilla, and you have to spend nature gems. So it's a nature five, it's 40 gems, which is a pretty reasonable price for a nature three air three mage. Um, you can summon sprites every turn if you want to, but you probably don't want to. Um, they also can, they're stealthy, they can heal diseases. Uh, they are really, really good. The only problem really with them is you're gonna wanna usually put items on them because they have zero protection. So they'll literally fall over and die in combat if you don't put something on them. And they don't have a ton of hit points, so I don't know. It would be pretty common to put like a, sword, a coral sword on them and then some kind of base armor. And that would just be like the starter kit for using them in combat. But they're really good. Really, really good. You'll see a lot of these in multiplayer. Um, next up, we have the Ivy King. Uh, these are cheaper. So the Fairy Court was 40 gems. Um, and you get a Nature 3, um, Air 3. This one is 30 gems for what is decidedly except that it can't fly a better chassis. However, it doesn't have air access. So if you were using the Fairy Queen only for the nature, you could argue this is a significantly better value. So something to consider. Um, Ivy King, pretty good. Um, and that's it. That's it for the summons. But the big ones, I think what you'll probably spend most of your nature gems on, unless you have really good, if you have good access to nature mages, there's no point spending your nature gems on it. But the Ivy King and the Fairy Court are really good. Um, next up, we have all the Nature Globals. And there are a lot of really good Nature Globals. Um, these are all really, really strong. Uh, Mother Oak comes online really early. It's only 10 gems, but it comes online early. And uh, that means if you get it, you're going to have it for longer. Uh, the only downside of getting it is a lot of times people fight over it. 
So um, anyway, just be prepared for people to contest you for this in multiplayer. Uh, next up, we have the three big ones. And honestly, one of these is better than the rest. But honestly, all of these are potentially game winning. So Gift of Nature's Bounty, I will just get this, the elephant out of the room. This is one, one of the other game winning globals. This is probably the second most game winning global behind Arcane Nexus. And I would say it's a, it's a bit behind it. Like Arcane Nexus is a, a significant amount better than this. And you can, I've killed players that have had this up without taking this down. So it's not like if you put it up, you're gonna win the game. But oh my God, is it strong. It's so freaking strong. Um, 20% per candle. So if you're at 10 candles in most of your provinces, which you should, you know, which you might, I'm not going to say you should be, but you very well could be by the time you get enchantment nine, then you're basically going to get a bonus 200% to your income. So if you're at 10,000 gold income, you will now be at 30,000 gold income. It's a huge deal. And when you factor in, if you were at 10,000 income and you had an upkeep of 5,000, you have a disposable income of 5,000, and that's going to go up to 25,000. So it's actually five, a five times multiplier for disposable income. It's a big deal. Uh, this is really good. But um, if you put this up, expect people to attack you. That's basically how that works. Um, Next up, we have Enchanted Forest. This also is a potentially game-winning global, though probably not as strong as Gift of Nature's Bounty. It's going to make all it's going to make all forests, um, either neutral or enemy, um, act as if they were a temple. And once uh, your dominion gets in there, then you're going to have all sorts of forest critters spawning out from uh, adjacent to that forest province and attacking. So it's going to give you a huge amount of <coughs> of dominion pressure on the map and it's going to attack so you can potentially combo this with other globals that affect dominion can make it really hard to deal with but this is a game winning global um if somebody puts it up you need to pay very close attention um it like i said it's probably not as game winning as this one but this is like very strong end game stuff um gift of health is probably the least game winning of these three um, but it's really good. It's more, def well, this is more offensive in nature, right? Because it's attacking things that are outside of your dominion, that are outside of your territory. This this can, like, help you to close a game out. Gift of Health is more defensive-oriented. It's going to give bonus 10% HP per candle in your dominion. So if you're at 10 candles, it's going to double the hit points of all your units. This is really useful for things like dealing with uh, remotes, which are going to nuke you. Uh, it's also really useful um, for getting rid of afflictions. Um, and it's also just useful for combat. If you're fighting big fights in your dominion, you're going to have a major advantage having twice as much hit points. It's also going to mean twice as much regen. Uh, it's really good. Um, it also is going to slow down aging. I didn't actually know that. But, um, but the affliction reduction is also really important. It's Not only is it nice to just clear afflictions off your armies, uh, but it's also going to open up things like uh, getting Tartarians. This is one of the very few ways to get the Feeble Mind Affliction off of Tarts, which actually, I, I should have pulled that up because I didn't mention that for, for death. So let's do that now. Um, here we go, Tart. So this is uh, another one I should have mentioned under death. But um, basically, it's 10 gems. You get one of these guys. A lot of the time, they're going to be... Uh, feeble-minded, and if they're feeble-minded, they're gonna have a bunch of afflictions. But a lot of times, the affliction is feeble-minded. If the feeb, if they're feeble-minded, you basically are gonna need either the recuperation bless or gift of health to get that off of them. And the thing is, if you don't get feeble-minded off, then you won't ever get access to their paths. The other thing is that a lot of these, some of these are commanders when you summon them, and some of them are units. So if they're a command, you can get a commander that's non-feeble-minded and you don't have any afflictions to get rid of, right? Um, but you can also get a commander who's feeble-minded um, and then you have to find one of these things. The worst thing would be if you have, and this actually happens all the time, you get a unit version, so you would have to gift of reason him to make him a commander. But on top of that, he's also feeble-minded or she, right? And you have to both gift of reason them and get the affliction off. So um, this can be worth, by the way, casting, even if you don't have access to a recuperation bless or gift of health. 
Um, cause you'll still roll some of these that are going to give you the paths you want. However, it's a lot better if you do have access to the gift of health or recuperation. In my humble opinion, this is a little bit of a trap. It gets used a lot late game by very good players. It can be very useful, but I just would, by the time what I have found when I have used it is by the time all the the gems you've put in to gift of reasoning them, summoning them, controlling gift of health, and once you get them, you have to stuff armor and items on them. By the time you've done all that, you've invested so freaking much. Even though they're good units, they're not really going to carry all the weight you've put on their back. That's my humble opinion. Um, I will say against like newer players, they can really struggle killing tarts. Like they can be newer players, tarts can feel like unkillable things. So in that sense, they're good. But I think any experienced player will like if you put a tart in a province next to an experienced player and you said kill it this turn, and it was you know like turn sixty or seventy in the game, I think almost every single one would be able to kill it. Right, so killing it for experienced players is not the question. The The question is just getting them in the right position to kill it. Anyway. But that's Gift of Health, another great way to spend nature gems. Um, and that is going to move us into blood. And honestly, I think we're going to skip blood. Because there's so much... Oh, no. Uh, blood, I have to do a whole guide on, guys. Blood would take just as long as this whole other thing. There's so much stuff in blood, and it's a whole different animal. So with that... Uh, we're already at uh, 70 minutes, so thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. I'm sure I got plenty of things wrong. Some of your favorite items or summons probably aren't in here. Some of those I probably disagree with you about. I don't think they should be in this list. Probably a lot of them I would agree with you about, too, and just think I missed them. So uh, if you think I missed something that's super generic, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, I'll probably be curmudgeon -y and grumble as I look at it and be like, oh, I did miss that, damn it. But uh, anyway... Uh, I will see y'all next time. Thank you for watching and take care.